Okay, shall we start? I've not had any emails through to say people can't get on, so we'll make a start now. Okay, so today we're going to be talking to you about um, our handy calendar, which most of you, if you joined us last week, would have had a, an introduction to. Um, and I'm not going to talk too much about um, this slide because most people on here, I'm sure, are already um, working with people with a cognitive difficulty. So, um, but just to quickly go through the benefits of using assistive technology to support. Um, I think that the handy calendar, um, they can help with increased self-esteem. So for somebody using the handy calendar, it means that they can um, do things independently, which obviously makes um, it is better for their mental health. And um, people tend to respond better to the handy calendar because it's a, a device telling them what to do rather than um, a person, which certainly works better in our household. Um, I forgot to say actually, just to go backwards, there is a chat box um, on the one side of your screen and Charlotte's gonna be monitoring that. So if you've got any questions on the way through, pop in the chat box and Charlotte can answer you or we can talk about it at the end and we need to discuss. Um, so to go back to this, um, increased motivation, um, saves time, that person already knows what they're doing for the day. It means that they can um, be ready, set up, and get ready for each task and start with each task really quickly. Um, obviously, it helps with memory as well. Um, if somebody's forgotten how to do something, then you can put in their handy calendar for that person how they need to do this. Um, and I will show you how that works in a minute. Portable is on a device. It can be on any device. It can be Android or iOS. Um, it can be on your phone. It can be on an, I an iPad or an Android tablet and can link to a, sp a smartwatch as well. And the remote support part, I'll go into in more detail later as well. Uh, the handy calendar can be um, accessed by anybody supporting that person. <clears throat> but again, I'll show you a bit more about the MyAbilia Cloud account in a second. Um, and I just really wanted to go through the kind of handy calendar development and how it's got to where it is today. So I think it's really important for people to know that this has been around for 20 years. Um, in fact, this is the 20th year. I should have changed that on the uh, on the slide. So the handy calendar has been running um, since 2020, um, since 2000, sorry. And on the slide, you can kind of see how it's gone from being on a real basic personal device um, and cut way through as technology's got better, the apps that we have today and the fact that it linked with the smartwatch um, as well. I think it's important for um, people to understand that it's been in development for a while. It has been used in Sweden um, for 20 years as a support aid for independent living. I'm just going to pop over. So all of our products um, in the cognition range, they, I think my video's just dropped out. I don't know if you can still hear me. I'm hoping you can. Pop in the chat box if there's any issues. I can still hear you. So okay, perfect. Uh, um, the quarter hour principle underpins all of our products in the cognition range. The principle is that we show time as a um, pillar of light. So you can see, it's not very clear on here, but you'll see it in a minute on the handy calendar. So we show time as um, a pillar of light. Every 15 minutes is broken down into one dot and one light goes out every 15 minutes. Ah, my camera's come back. Hopefully my connection's better now. Um, and this means that the user doesn't necessarily need to understand time. All they need to understand is that if, um, the lights go out as time is passing. And this shows people using our products that they are closer or further away from what they're waiting for, whether that be lunch or an activity that they need to do. Um, and for the users, they don't need to understand that one dot equals 15 minutes. Um, again, if, you, if, you're not, if you're struggling to understand time, it's not a concept that you need to be um, familiar with. Again, you'll just need to see the lights passing. Um, and we work on the premise that most people will understand what is more or less. 
So if there's less dots coming up to your lunch break, for instance, then you'll know that there's less time. And if there's more dots, more time. Um, let me pop it across. Um, the remote support. Oh, I've got a few people saying that they can't get on. Bear with me. I'm going to come back to remote support. I'm going to switch now, hopefully technology allowing to a live version. Perfect. Charlotte, can you see that just so I know that you. Oh, your mic's not on. <laughs> OK, so I wanted to be able to show you and I'm going to turn my camera off for a second. I wanted to be able to show you the, the live version of a handy calendar and how this works. So you've got what you can see now is the day view and you can see the time pillar down the side so the time pillar down the side the lights that are grayed out are the ones where the time has already passed and the lights that are still black are the lights that um where the time is still to come and you can also see straight across the um straight across the page is a red line that says now so looking at work for instance which is 11 20 till 1 you can see that with the red line that you're halfway through your um, morning work. And then if I go through the day's activities, so this one's set up for a seven o'clock wake up. So at seven o'clock an alarm will go off to wake the person up that's using this and they will have a checklist. Now the checklist can be as involved or not depending on the needs of the person that's using it. So this is quite a basic one um, and the person can go in and get their breakfast and click off. Uh, Charlotte, can you still see my screen? I don't know if my connection's dropped. Yeah, I can hear the screen. I can see the screen. Sorry, yeah. Okay, okay. I can't see it my end. I was just checking. <laughs> um, so like I said, you can check off each of the activities when you've done them. Um, for instance, if there's um, brush teeth and the brush teeth needs to be more involved, so it could in, it could involve pictures of step by step how to brush your teeth. Um, it, you could put a timer in there on how to brush your teeth. So these are, this is quite a generic list, but like I say, you can make it more personalised depending on the needs of the user. Um, the next one I would like to show you is catch the bus. So um, within the activity, you can um, Put notes in. Um, I, I tend to use this um, with my son and I'll put social stories in this section. So this is like a really basic what to do while waiting for the bus and um, what to do if there's any issues or you're, you're needing reassurance. But obviously you can use the notes section for, for whatever you need to put in there, whether it be a quick note or a social story. Um, come out of there. For Morning break, I've put in a timer to show you how to use the timer. Um, these, these lights going up the side here that are, that are flashing, this just means that this activity is passed because I'm going back to the, to the morning activities. When, they, that when they're static, it means that it's, a, it's an activity still to come. So on here, I can start a timer when it's time to go for my break, and then it will alarm at the end to tell me that it's finished. Um, this one's set up obviously for somebody at work or um, I often use this one when talking to people about supported internships as well. Um, let me just go back in and see what. Um, on this one as well, you can link to a map. So you can um, put in the details, for instance, of a bus stop or if there's somebody's going for an appointment then you can put in the details of that. And then if you click on open map, it will take you straight to a map that will help the person um, find where they're going to. Obviously, it will take you to whatever you're using, whether it be Google Maps or the Apple version. You <clears throat> can also pop in links to websites. Um, and this one here will take you straight through to a this one's under cook dinner. So this one takes you straight through to a recipe. Um, so you, obviously you can set this up for somebody um, for all sorts. We have um, a charity that I'm working with that are using, a, a setting up um, YouTube accounts, so a private YouTube account. 
so that you can link the activities with something that somebody's doing. So for instance, if you're teaching somebody life skills, such as how to make a cup of tea um, or a cup of coffee, then you can video that person doing that in their own home um, and then link that back. So when it's time to make that cup of tea again or make that cup of coffee again, you can link it straight to a video. You also have the options. Um, hang on. Uh, for instance to teach life skills using the checklist so on this one you can take photos of the person of the person actually doing the skills in their own home for instance this one says um sort the dirty washing into colors and whites not sure how big this has come up on your screen so i couldn't make it any bigger on mine um but this just shows you with picture support real photo support how you can um how you can teach somebody and how you can put in those life skills. Um, also, you can link a telephone number straight into this. So if you've got something um, like a reminder to call a family member, then you can call straight from the device. Um, I can't show you this on an iPad because it hasn't got a SIM card in it, but if you're using it on a phone, for instance, then you just press the call button and it will call the person that you want to call. Um, we also have various different alarms set up. Um, there's one in here. This is a voice memo, um, which you can also leave in. For some people, it's really helpful to have that, um, <clears throat> to have the instructions um, given to you by voice. And if it's a voice of somebody that you are familiar with, um, then often that can be a lot easier for that person to understand. And also, if it's a high anxiety, um, activity for instance going to the dentist if you've got somebody that you trust and you know that can um tell you in a voice memo and you can play exactly what's going to happen at that dentist then often that can alleviate a lot of anxiety um and obviously you can set things for reminders for medication this one's just got a picture in it but you could have pictures of the person's medication and what they need to take with instructions on each on each time, especially if they've got lots of different medications to take. Um, you'll notice that these have got a little alarm bells next to them, and these just mean that they're alarmed. <clears throat> you can have the um, activities so that they're alarmed or not alarmed. I think if, you're, if you have things that are really important alarms, that makes it much easier for somebody to use because if it alarms constantly throughout the day, then people get to the point where they just ignore the alarms because they're used to them going off. Um, there's um, various different views. So this is the day view. As you can see, this has got the line going across. You can have it also as a list view. You can also have your whole week. So you can see exactly what's going to happen on your week. And you can <clears throat> go in and out of any of those activities. So it's especially great if you've got somebody that's struggling with um, when something's going to happen. So for instance, if, they, if you've got somebody using this and they've got a holiday coming up, instead of saying, when are we going on holiday? When are we going on holiday? Um, that can be put into their calendar and they can read the social story on that day about exactly when that's gonna happen. And you also have a whole month view as well. So you can see on here, <clears throat> you've still got your daily activities down the bottom. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the rest of the month is grayed out, so you can see exactly where you are in the month. Um, the handy calendar is um, really simple to use and really simple to set up. Um, you literally just press the add button and decide what type of activity you are adding in. Um, single, all day or reoccurring. If you click on reoccurring, you can set it up for weekly, monthly, yearly, which is especially great for um, somebody living by themselves if they need to be remembering to pay bills monthly or remembering to pay bills yearly. Um, and you can choose which days you need it to be on. Um, really good for if you're setting up for college users or school users. Um, there's an option to do every second week. Uh, quite often with school and colleges, they have a two week rotor. So you've got that option as well. You choose an end date or no end date in this instance. And then to finish adding your activity, you can add a picture. 
There is a picture library that comes already um, in with the handy calendar, or you can take any pictures from your camera. Also, you can take um, you can take pictures directly and add them into the activity. You've got obviously the name. Everything else is quite straightforward: the date, the start time, the entry. Um, you can choose whether you want to delete it from that person's calendar or not once the activity is passed. Some people like to see them gone so that it doesn't, um, they know that it's finished and they don't have to worry about that anymore. Some people like to leave them there so that they can see what they've achieved for the day. Um, you can decide to whether to make the activity checkable or not. And that just means that something like medication, if the activity is checkable, then you, you as a support person can go back in and check that it's been done. Um, category you can color code which is really helpful I find with supported internships it means that you can color code um, activities that are at home and activities that are um, for instance at work so everything could be at blue at home and everything could be orange at work also you've got the opportunity to color code things based on anxiety levels so if you know that it's going to be high anxiety, you can color code it red. So we could use a traffic light system. Um, and so that person already knows that there's going to be something that may cause them anxiety. And again, you can use your notes for social stories on that. Um, your information button down here allows you to add um, all of these things. You can add a note, you can add a checklist, you can add a voice memo, timer, picture, and in, the extended menu, you can add things that I showed you about adding of addresses and telephone numbers as well. Um, you can choose how you want it to alarm. It can alarm loudly as part of it. A silent alarm means that you get a notification. So much the same if you get a WhatsApp message and your friends on silent, it will still pop up to a notification to say that you've got a WhatsApp message. This will do the same um, at, or no alarm. You've also got the option to um, set reminders. So if somebody has an uh, um, uh, looks at an activity and thinks, oh, I need to do that, but and you know that it's going to be something that they'll put to one side and go back to, then you can set reminders so that it keeps reminding them until they actually action that activity. Um, you have the option of speech support. So if you click on the little person down the bottom, start time. Um, I'm hoping that you can hear that. I'm not sure how you, if you can over the web, but um, it reads out all of the information to you. So if somebody works better with um, with this, this speech being told what to do rather than just seeing what to do, then uh, you've got the speech support and that was available on any of this. So if you put the speech support here today, the speech support and well, work, and then it will be actually So the handy calendar is really, really easy to, like I say, to set up, and it's really easy to customise. Some people might like pictures that you can see on Catch the Bus. Some people might like icons. If you're already using a picture-based support, such as PEX or something like that, then you can um, download all those into your folder and continue to use those on your digital device as well. Um, right, bear with me. I'm just going to switch back screens. Turn my camera back on. And go back to the slides. Yep, I'm just going to come back to the right place. Um, so we, the Abilia account that comes with this um, handy calendar is a My Abilia online cloud account, and it means that you can remote support the person using <clears throat> using the handy calendar. So you can have access as a family member, you can have access as a teacher, as a carer, as um, somebody supporting somebody through work, a key worker, any anybody, and as many as you need on there. And that person can log on either on their PC or their tablet through a browser, or they can um, download the app onto their phone and click straight in. Um, this gives you access to change anything that's on there. It gives you access to add an activity. So if you've got an appointment's popped up and you're looking after that person, you can put it straight into their diary. Um, if there's going to be a change to an activity, so if they're expecting you to turn up at one 
and you're running late, then you can change the time of an activity and that will send them a notification to say that something's changed. Um, you can also um, delete activities and copy and paste activities as well. So if you've got a template of activities set up and you know that that thing is going to happen the next day, you can quickly copy and paste it across. So that gives you a really um, a real kind of wrap around care and access to help that person and have as many people helping that person as you need. So I'm going to just pop, out, pop you over to Charlotte, who's just going to break up my voice for a second and talk to you about Handy Calendar in schools. Um, so let me pop over to Charlotte. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Yeah. Um, it's just a really, really quick one just to uh, just to kind of set up for next week's webinar, which is going to be all about the DSA um, side of Handy Calendar. Our Handy Calendar app has just been DSA approved, which means that students can access it through DSA funding, which is fantastic news for us. Um, we are working on getting the rest of the cognition range approved by the DSA at the same time. Um, the reason that we think it's going to be really, really positive for schools, for, for colleges and for universities is the fact that it kind of covers so many areas. It's not just study, it's not just work, it's not just home. It kind of can be manipulated for each one. And so we can we can use it for students who are living away from home for the first time, who need independent skills for life skills. So, you know, as Sarah's mentioned, things like the washing, the ironing, the, the cooking, the basic kind of independent skills that they may not have. Um, it can break down study skills as well. So a tutor can put in a set amount of work per week, which means the student can access smaller chunks of study, which makes obviously study so much easier for them. Um, and so, yeah, we're, ho we're hosting our first DSA webinar next Thursday at 12 o'clock. And we're really excited to show you kind of how it will work within schools and how it will, how it will support students. Perfect. Thank you. <clears throat> So I just wanted to show you a few case studies of um, people that are already using the Handy Calendar. This is one that you can access, um, and this is a video that's on our um, Abilia YouTube account. And um, also on our website, there's a user section which talks about all the different case studies um, for all the countries. Like I've mentioned already that uh, the Handy Calendar has already been used in Sweden and Norway. Um, now we've launched just over a year in the UK. Um, but there's other countries as well. We sell worldwide. So there's case studies from all over that you can access. Um, and this one talks about Emma, who uses the candy, um, the handy calendar. I won't read out everything that's on the slide. You can download these slides afterwards. Um, and again, these are just some links to some of the stories that are on there. The top one is Emma's story. Um, the second one is Frederick. He um, uses the handy calendar. He is ADHD. So he uses that. Um, for structure in his daily life. The next one is actually my story. And anybody that was on last week or I've met so far along the way will hear me talk about Jake all the time. Um, we use their handy calendar and memo timer. Um, we also, um, actually I should show that. I'm just gonna quickly show you for those that weren't on last week. This is our memo timer. We use the, um, <clears throat> the same premise that we use the colored dots that go out. I'm not sure whether you're gonna be able to see because my room is quite light. But there's coloured lights that go out and they go out to show the time passing. So this is something that you'll see on my on my case study that we use quite a lot in, indoors. And we use that for things like um, turning off the Xbox. So 15 minutes left on the Xbox. Or if we're leaving the house, then I can say right, we're leaving in 10 minutes. You need to have your shoes on, 10 minute timer. And then Jake can work out how much time he's got left before that's going to happen. But you can read about that on our website. Um, I also wanted to show you, this is a slide that was sent over from Kent County Council that used the Handy Calendar. They have a dedicated autism team, um, outreach support team, and they've been using the Handy Calendar um, just well, probably about a year and a half now. And this is some of the feedback that they were given um, from the people that they're supporting. Um, and it's really lovely to hear feedback. I mean, Charlotte and myself, as you know, um, both use the products ourselves, both with our boys at home. So we know that they work, but it's really good to get feedback from other people to say that this is what we're doing. And, and also, um, because it's so customizable, there'll be things that people come back with that we hadn't thought of how to use it as well. So that was just some quotes from our users. Um, 
things like the handy calendar has been life changing or um, I love the real life pictures, which I think is a really lovely feature. Um, I didn't know when I needed to take my medication. So all these things, managing personal hygiene, um, how to clean the kitchen, all these things really help. Um, and about Abilia support, uh, we do offer a four week free trial of the Handy Calendar. So we can get you set up with one of those. Um, if you're working with people in the community, um, we can set you up with a, a trial license um, for longer so that if you're going out to show people that you can have your own one set up. Um, there's on our website, there's videos, there's case studies, there's all the manuals that you need to set it up. And we have a, um, a very quick guide, setup guide, which is picture guide um, to help with the setup that we send out of all the free trials. Um, initially, we um, offer training sessions as well. Obviously, at the moment, they're going to be online. Um, we are following this up with um, bite size online how to videos, which we're looking at getting filming in the next week, um, which all the things that I've just showed you on the handy calendar will put into bite sized pieces so that the user themselves will be able to make sure that they know how to set up their own calendar and follow instructions. Um, and we also have a um, team in the office, Monday to Friday, that you can either um, phone or email in. And there's also my, the likes of myself and Charlotte and the rest of the team that we were out on the road, but obviously now we're home-based. And you can email and telephone us whenever, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. I think see that's the that's everything that I needed to say. Um, Charlotte's just going to go through any questions that have come in, so that I can uh, answer anything that you need to. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, yep, you can hear you now. Yep. Okay. Uh, the first one that I've got is what conditions and who can it support? Are there specific conditions that we're aiming to support, or is it just a general one? Um, with regard to the conditions, we have multiple uh, we have lots of different people using it so it could be um autism support as me and charlotte use it for and um quite a lot of the local authorities use it um we have people with learning disabilities um down syndrome we have people um using it for rehabilitation purposes especially if that person needs to for instance get up out of the chair every hour or remember to take a drink or get some exercise and all those things can be put in. Um, we also have a few users with dementia. The de our main kind of support with dementia seems to be the non-digital versions at the moment and we'll be doing, um, we'll be giving some more information on those in upcoming webinars and there is downloadable files at the end with the rest of our product range on. Um, I think that for dementia care is going to be more um, coming towards the digital side of the market. But obviously, if you're struggling with dementia already, then you learning to use a digital device is not often the best way forward. So, okay, so I've got um, who is currently using the handy calendar? Do we have any kind of specific areas that it's currently being used in? So we have. Um, lots of different areas we have um, various nhs teams they tend to be the outreach teams um, using the handy calendars uh, we have um, various teams within local authority i already mentioned kent but essex and cambridge i also work with as well uh, with quite a few um charities as well so they, they'll be the charities that are um like Leonard cheshire for instance that are looking after people either in group housing or in the um, community. Or it could be that there's a transition stage. So some people um, will transition into the community. So they may live in a group home for a year or two. And in that time, they can learn to use a handy calendar. Um, and then obviously that will that'll help them when they um, go to live more independently. Okay. Um, schools as well. Sorry, I just, I just remembered. <laughs> <clears throat> um, we have um, Cornwall College, I don't know if David Don, he was um, due to join us today, but they were really, really um, tech focused and one of the first schools that have started using handy calendars in lessons. 
Um, and that's something that obviously we'll be talking about next week when we um, talk about the education side of things um, on next week's webinar. Um, we've got a couple of questions about um, stroke and acquired brain injury and um, moderate TBI, which is another kind of brain injury. Is this a suitable solution for that? Um, we, yes, I'd say yes, definitely. It's going to really depend on the user's capabilities. And um, I guess it's going to depend on whether or not they're already tech savvy, their age, and how much they're going to engage with it. I mean, we are experienced to know that we cannot say that this will work for everybody. I mean, we've had really great success with it with our with our own children, but I couldn't definitely say yes, it's going to work with every autistic child that you that tries it. But this is why we offer the four week free trial, so it gives you the chance to set it up. We will help you with that and trial it for four weeks and see if it's going to work before purchasing. Okay, and we've got a couple of people asking about the costs after the free trial. So the Handy Calendar is priced at £120 plus VAT a year um, per license. So each user will need their own individual license to share licenses. Um, they download that onto multiple devices. So for instance, if you've got an app phone and an Android tablet, you can download it onto both and you can use it on both. They will mirror each other. Um, you can download it onto Tunes if you needed to, and a tablet, and your watch. Um, and you also get access to the online cloud account, MyAbilia. Okay, and I've got a question about how much it will cost for DSA students. Um, so I can answer that one, actually. It's going to be £160 for a year's licence for a DSA student. Obviously, it can come in kind of three, four, five-year blocks, however long the student plans to study for. And, um, yeah, I think that's all of the... I think that's all of the questions done. Oh, no, I've got one, sorry. Um, does that come down the more licenses you purchase? No, that's a that's a set £120 per licence. Um, but you can purchase in groups, and we can, we can offer kind of group support and, and much more intense support with that. Yeah, we do offer like a train-the-trainer um, yeah. deal where we'll come and do a group support, a group training. Um, and then from if it's a local authority, for instance, or a charity, um, we will train one person so that they're completely au fait with it and support that one person. And then they can um, obviously support other users. Um, if it's a huge amount of licenses that you um, after, then always ask. <laughs> I'm sure my manager will love me saying that, but yeah, always <laughs> ask. <laughs> um, Anita's just mentioned if they're in a care home with three autistic adults, um, can the provider have the license? Yes. So I, I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you mean does the care home purchase the three licenses and keep them if that person moves on, or if they want to move them, the licenses around? Um, um, so she says um, having three devices with three different users. You would so need I'm, three I'm sure. licenses because you, if you had um, one license and three users, then the calendar that I showed you would look <clears throat> very messy and be using it. It'd be hard for somebody that doesn't have um, any kind of learning difficulties or struggles with structure like a person with autism. So you would need three licenses, but you can add them to as many devices as you need. So the, the licenses are per user, um, but they can be by the care home for instance so if a care home purchased three licenses and those people moved on they can take the handy calendar with them and purchase the handy calendar and the care home would still retain theirs but all the information in that person's handy calendar would go with them okay i haven't seen any more questions coming i'm just going to quick flip through and make sure i've not missed any oh, i've got um, just one more is it suitable for um, a person with adhd uh, yes, we have um, the case study online with Frederick that uses it with ADHD. Um, obviously, anybody that struggles with structure. Um, and again, it would be something that you would use your four-week trial just to double check that that person's going to be okay with it. But um, most people, I've not had many people come back in the time that I've worked for Abilia, which is nearly a year and a half now, come back and say that it didn't work. But I would say any anyone anyone that struggles with structure and time and routine is going to help regardless of their diagnosis. Fantastic. I think we've covered all the questions. 
Hey, okay, so just one more. <laughs> um, talked, sorry, it says we talked about speech support, but is it also compatible with voiceover in the accessibility features of the device? Yeah, so if you're using the Apple iPad, for instance, there's already speech support built in, and you can link it with that, which gives you multiple choices on voices. I think our one has two two voices that you can use, but yeah, you can use it with the iPad um, and the Android device. Oh everything yeah I obviously if, through them perfect well and if anyone has any further um questions then obviously they can come back to us i will be emailing out everybody that's joined um one thing that i haven't done before people um go is just quickly download the poll if you've got time to just quickly have a look at that um and it's just to help us to know when um how people heard about us and what's the best, most effective way of getting out to everybody um, and then I will download the files as well. So uh, can you see them already? I don't know, I need to share them. Okay, I'm sharing all the product details. So you can download any of these that you want. I've put all four of our products on. The top two are the Handy Calendar and Memo Timer that I've shown you today. Um, the Memo Day Planner is our low, and the Memo Planner is a dedicated device, um, both of which we will be doing future webinars on. And I am going to end that poll and just quickly ask, I know a few people are about to leave, but there's one more that we'd really like to understand where people are from. Um, so there's just one more poll there. And like I said, if anyone's got any further questions, they can drop us an email, either Charlotte or myself, um, and we will be asking people afterwards. <clears throat> and there's quite a few saying education setting. Obviously, we'll send out um, we'll send out invitations to our education DSA based webinar for next week as well. That's if we had any more questions, come in the chat box. If not, we will sign off. No, just a couple of thank yous. So thanks everyone for joining us. It's been really yes, great. perfect. Thank you everybody. Perfect. Thank you everybody.